Well, hello and welcome to this latest edition of the Transformation Leaders podcast, where today we're going to concentrate on performance improvement and looking at performance both as an individual level, a team level and an organisational level. We're going to talk about an approach that I think works really, really well um, and one that you can adopt relatively easily within a transformation programme. So without further ado, let me share my screen and we can go into more detail about the actual model. So yes, yes, today we're talking about the performance improvement approach that works for transformation programmes. So why is it important? Well, we live in this vocal world of volatility, uncertainty, complexity and ambiguity, and that can have a big impact upon the performance and the productivity across of both individuals, organisations, teams. So it's our real ability to transition from that volatility into something that's got clarity around vision, from that uncertainty to something that's very much about better understanding of what we're trying to achieve, that complexity to clarity and ambiguity to agility. Having that ability to drive forward is, is a critical skill set um, of transformation leaders but also of leaders generally within organisations. And ultimately, as an individual, you know, that's what we want, isn't it? We want absolute clarity about where we're going, absolute understanding of what it's going to take to get there, but equally having to build that agility into the way that we're, we're moving from A to B. Uh, and by doing that, you know, that performance improvement, we, 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 it becomes a real sort of strategic imperative and not just operational activity. Um, and it's really about driving that sustainable success on an ongoing basis with, as, a, as an individual, as a team or as a uh, organisation. And ultimately, um, you know, as a transformation initiative or transformation programme, our ability to consistently improve performance across the whole organisation will be a critical success factor. So let's go into more detail. I want to talk today about this approach called CLEAR. It's an approach I've developed over a number of years. It sort of brings together some ideas from, from different models, uh, but I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you in, in more detail about what I mean uh, uh, in these five sort of pillars, which coincidentally make the word clear. Um, why is it important and, and, and what does the clear approach really focus on? Well, it's about helping to navigate that complexity. It's about building that clarity and ensuring that that uh, clarity about where we're going is in alignment with the core vision uh, and strategic priorities. Again, that could be our personal vision, it could be the team vision, it could be the organisation vision, but it's about really making sure that those, there's, there's an alignment in place and getting that clarity and removing the complexity. It's about really understanding how we can prioritise what we do. We've spoken a number of times in the past on these sessions about, on a personal level, having a to-don't list because there's all stuff that's happening all the time that takes our time away from the stuff that we should really be doing. And that real clarity and prioritisation and real focus um, gives us that ability to drive forward on the areas where we can deliver the greatest impact. Um, and fundamentally, it's about get, building that engagement with the right people at the right time so that you really get the buy-in of people, all your stakeholders, people within the team, people in the, within the wider team, because that's the way, as we all know, that's the way to really drive change within an organisation. And ultimately, performance improvement activities are a change. We're asking people to change what they do, uh, are doing to improve performance and productivity on, a, on an ongoing basis. So, it, you know, that clear um, model, this clear approach, I think covers the five core areas to achieve those, those, those three bullet points there. So let's start and go into a little bit more detail about each of the areas under the clear approach. So C is clarity, and it's about providing that vision and direction. So really, how can we get a, and, and develop a real compelling vision that connects both individual roles to the larger purpose and really starts to make the transformation meaningful for everyone? How can we do that? What does it take to, do, to, to create that sort of compelling vision? 
And then moreover, once we've got that vision, that North Star, how can we develop real clarity um, and um, around core objectives and what we're doing to drive from A to B? And how can we put measurable objectives in place so that it really helps to translate that vision into specific actions and a roadmap that we can move forward on um, to move from A to B? And, and how can we get clarity around the communication channels that we're going to be utilising to really ensure that we've got ongoing alignment and address that ambiguity, but ultimately to reinforce the transformation purpose. We've all been in situations where we get involved in work um, and we're being asked to do things differently. We don't really understand why. We don't understand where we're moving towards. And as and, and you know, if you've been in that situation, it can be very frustrating and often it has an impact upon your performance. So if we're, if we're focused upon improving performance, getting clarity, getting that real compelling vision is a critical skill that we, we've got to adopt and, and, and embed within our sort of role as transformation leader. The second area is getting that absolute laser focus um, and prioritizing what we do. Um, as we as we said earlier, ultimately, we've, everybody in the world is equal in terms of the amount of time that they've got each day. Um, it's our ability to utilize that time in the most productive way that helps us to deliver the biggest impact. And again, that's on an individual basis, on a team basis, on an organization basis. But what we tend to get involved in um, as individuals, as teams, is getting involved in the stuff that doesn't really matter. It's not going to move the dial. It's, you know, it's getting involved in stuff that may be easy. Um, and what we need to put in place is a robust framework so that we can really evaluate the activities, the initiatives that we're doing, um, and, and have a way to prioritise them, a structured way to prioritise them. And one of the easiest ways, getting that clarity around vision and that strategy is asking the question, is it taking me closer to or further away, that North Star? Uh, because that gives us that initial ability to make that decision to say, yeah, I'm going to move forward with it or I'm not. But equally, we need to ensure that we've got a real sort of culture of disciplined execution. Because if we don't, the likelihood is that we'll end up getting attracted by the next shiny thing. Um, so we've got to build that environment in that culture where people have got clarity absolutely about where we're going and why we're going and real focus upon what we're doing but at the same time have the ability and the willingness to say no when new things start to to to, to, to crop up so that we can prioritize the resources prioritize the actions to achieve what we've set out to achieve but equally, we need to review on a regular basis because, you know, we need to take into account things that are happening around us. So I'm not, that's not to say it's right to grab hold of the next shiny thing. But if there's an opportunity that arises or if there is a threat that's, that's come on the horizon, we need to be able to respond proactively to that. And that may mean that some of the actions and some of the activities, the initial plan that we set out might need to be adapted. And, but let's let's have a process for that, but let's really maintain absolute laser focus on what we're trying to do and why we're trying to do it. The third area is, is around the engagement. Again, we've spoken about this earlier, but really engaging with people at the right time to cultivate that commitment. So three areas really here, you know, let's get clarity across all of the leadership team at every level within the organisation about um, understanding what we're doing, why we're doing it, and, and, and building that sort of leadership practice of engagement um, and invite input and collaborations at all levels. Um, yeah, this is critical, uh, absolute critical. And, and, and what, what I've seen many times, and I'm sure you have, are leaders that say one thing but do something differently. Um, and that breaks trust down uh, immediately. Um, so you know, if we're saying we're going to be an open and we're going to collaborate in, in our communications and we're going to engage with people, make sure we do it. Because the first time you don't is the first time that that trust starts to get broken into. 
So recognise and celebrate contributions and milestones, absolutely. We can reinforce that positive feedback loop, which continues to, to, to motivate that sort of continual engagement. But utilise all of the available platforms to communicate and engage with people. Uh, but one key message here is if you ask for input and ask for that engagement, make sure that you take it on board, you listen, you take it on board and you respond to it. You know, it, there's nothing worse than being asked for feedback or ask, uh, en um, encouraging engagement and then ideas or um, feedback is provided and nothing happens. It, it appears to go into a black hole and again, breaks down trust very, very quickly. So build that engagement at all levels within the organisation and really start to um, deliver on an ongoing basis the things that you say you're going to deliver. Agility is the fourth area um, and, and that ability to adapt swiftly. You know, as we said earlier, things happen. You know, opportunities arise, threats appear uh, on, the, on the horizon. And it's critical that we have that ability to adapt and, 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 and that ag agile mindset, really, at all levels. Um, and, and the way to do that is, is, is to establish a framework, a culture, where experimentation is accepted. The fact that we can learn from failures but we, and, and, and ultimately quickly um, capitalise on opportunities is a key mindset. And um, you know, to achieve that, we've got to uh, create that mindset and that, that, that culture within the organisation that saying actually we're happy to fail you know, we, because we can learn from it. it. It's a learning experience. It shouldn't be something that gets slapped down. Um, but ultimately, you know, the part of that is to also streamline decision-making processes because if you've got to respond quickly and you've got to be agile, if you're working in an organisation that's got a structure around uh, seven seven la layers to get anything agreed, that can slow the process up. And again, what that ends up doing is breaking down that culture of, of innovation and that culture of um, continual improvement uh, because you just get frustrated that it takes so long to get any decisions. decisions. So actually, I may, may as well not bother because I won't hear anything back for the next four months. You know, that mindset can really start to infiltrate an organisation very, very quickly. But again, also, you know, a key part of this is embedding that flexibility into strategic planning and operational processes. So it gives us that ability to swiftly pivot when opportunities arise but ultimately a way of measuring performance and understanding when we need to pivot and how we can reallocate resources uh, as needed uh, in, a, in the most appropriate way. The final um, element of the CLEAR model is building resilience and strengthening that capacity within the organisation. So how can we create that supportive organisation that views setbacks as growth opportunities? You know, to start to build that resilient culture within the organisation. How can we strengthen our systems and processes to, uh, to ensure that we, that, that they, shall I say, can withstand the disruptions um, that may happen when, when, you know, as, 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 as the world changes around us, as opportunities uh, uh, appear? How can we maintain continuity and stability? And ultimately, you know, part of this, performance improvement and part of this sort of continual improvement mindset is how can we encourage that that ability for people to feel that they're contributing and feel that they're in a, a supportive environment and feel that actually their success is just as important as the other person's success how can we support individuals and that collective resilience ensuring that ultimately they thrive as individuals the team thrives and the organisation thrives uh, as we go through the transformation. So the CLEAR model, um, I think, is, is, a, is a great blueprint for performance excellence. And it, it, it works at an individual level, it works at a team level, and it works at an organisation level. And certainly within transformation, it, it's, it's an, an effective model that you can start to apply very, very quickly. So remember, clarity, it aligns vision with action and making goals transparent and actionable for all. So get that real clarity about where we're going and why we're going there. 
get that laser focus so that we can eliminate all the stuff that happens around us and and, and stop doing the things that are uh, not as important or, or not providing the impact that we need to give us that ability to release time to prioritise for those uh, high impact uh, improvements. Engage with people uh, on an ongoing basis and build up that um, th those agents for change within the organisation and really encourage innovation in, 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 in ideas um, so that we can really drive forward on that performance improvement mindset. Absolutely adopt agility um, so that we can adapt our way, our route map, um, based upon the feedback that we get, based upon those external shifts that we've spoken about, um, but ultimately making sure that we are doing what we need to do to achieve what we've set out to achieve. Um, and finally, that resilience. Build those resilience, uh, that resilience uh, mindset within the organisation at an individual level, at a team level, and at an organisation level, um, so that we can learn from uh, failures, we can learn from successes, we can adapt in the right way, and we thrive on the challenges um, because that's what will drive long-term improvement. So there you have it: the clear process for performance improvement. Hopefully you've enjoyed this session. You've found a couple of things that you can start to apply immediately within your transformation activities. Please do leave us a comment. Let us know how you're going to embed some of these things. And please do subscribe so that we can notify you when the next video is released. With that, thank you very much for joining me today and have a great day.